Live from Lewis Cruz Stadium on the campus of Alabama A&M University, this is On the Hill, live with Dr. Paul A. Bryant. We have On the Hill, live. We have football, the Ness. fans, cheerleaders, fans, and of course, tailgating. Bulldog Nation football season is here. Hey, Brian, are you excited? Oh, am I excited? It was created in 2010, and in 2024, we're still going strong. I'm excited for football, the band, the cheerleaders, the fans, you name it. I'm excited for it. Well, let's get started with On the Hill Live. Let's get started. Live from Lewis Cruz Stadium on the campus of Alabama A&M University, this is On the Hill, live with Dr. Paul A. Bryant. Ty, first of all, this is our second season, you know, and I'm happy that you have joined us to be the co-host it's the old school and the new school. I have the paper, she has the iPad. But <laughs> we have a special guest here today. Ty, tell us who we have. Yes, we do have a special guest. We have the Shrine Bowl 1000 watch list, the Reese's Bowl watch list. I mean, A.D. Bryant, to name all of his accomplishments, we're going to have to take a very long time. I take a lunch break just to name them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but joining us on On the Hill Live today is Carson Vinson. We're so excited to have you here. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited, excited to be here. It's a great opportunity. I love On the Hill Live. It's a blessing to be here. Yeah. Well, I will tell you, I have to say this before we really get to asking you questions. <laughs> There's been a debate up here. <laughs> Carson is from North Carolina. He is from North Carolina. And then Ty says she's from North Carolina, but he calls it what? The fake, fake North Carolina. Yeah, she's from the fake North Carolina. She I really from Florida. Florida. <laughs> so, I don't know how you had to do me like that. So Ty, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, I lived in North Carolina, you know, for a pretty long time. Hey, shout out 919. Carrie. Shout out 704. But, Carson. An athlete staying at one institution nowadays is a rarity. What about Alabama A&M is so special to you? Um, it's really all about family. Like, this is the place that gave me my opportunity, the place that gave me my chance, and you don't turn your back on family. Uh, everything I've gotten, everything I've accomplished is because of this institution right here, and I owe everything I can to this institution, and I love Alabama A&M, so there's no reason for me to go. You know, you've, you've been, been here all four years. We've seen the maturation from freshman year to now your senior. A couple weeks ago, there's 18, 20 NFL teams in here to see you. How do you feel? How do you react in practice when you know that they're here to see you? Um, it's all the same. Uh, I'm just out there playing football. Everything in my life to this point has built me to for this moment. Um, even going to an HBCU, all the things that come with it, it all builds up to this moment, and there's no pressure. You just playing football. You out there playing football. It's nothing. To, it, I've been doing this since I was a kid. <laughs> you know, and I can tell. You, it really is no pressure for you. You have been amazing. You have been strong. You have been resilient. So I want to applaud you for staying here for four years because you are a true bulldog. <laughs> hey, bad bad bulldog to the day I die. My man, my yes, sir. Man. <laughs> you got all these accolades, but you remain humble. Works really hard. How important is it to not develop a sense of Um, It's really just your internal, how, how you deal with things internally. Um, I'm very big on like details and I'm detail oriented and the things I want to do, I, I've been thinking about since I was a kid. So all those things culminate into just me wanting to be perfect, me wanting to be the best I can. Yes, you, you and I know that and I'm, I'm in a grin because I've seen you. And then I see you in the locker room. <laughs> so it's a switch that kicks on. Yes, sir. So you're mild and, and meek right now. But that switch, what triggers that switch? How do you get motivated? Uh, it's just everything that you deal with in life. Football is my therapy. Football is how I deal with my things. I don't, uh, I'm really to myself a lot. And, but football, that's where I'm able to express myself and how it's my therapy. When I go out in food, that, that's when I really feel. So that's how I am. Therapy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we know Carson, number 76, the football player. But tell, tell us a little, little bit about Carson, Carson the person. Uh, I really just be to myself a lot. I don't do a whole lot. 
I don't do too much. I really just like to kick it with the people I'm close with. I got a really tight knit circle. I, I don't not I don't really spread myself too thin. Yeah. Like I know a lot of people and I'm cool with a lot of people, but my inner circle is my inner circle, and I just like to keep it like that. Yeah. Good, good. 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 And hey, you know what? By keeping your circle tight, you always know and you can control the narrative yourself. Yes, What's that one song that really gets you going? Uh, I listen to Kick in the Dough by, uh, by uh, Biggie. Kick in the Dough, old school. All my stuff before the game is old school. That get me going every time. I'm kicking in the dough. <laughs> like when I put on my helmet, I'm kicking in the dough. Oh, we know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you just crossed Cap Out the Sign fraternity, incorporated a third generation loop. Explain the magnitude of joining the Brotherhood and continuing your family legacy. Uh, it meant everything to me. Uh, it was one of the biggest things I wanted to do in life. Uh, to be a third generation Noop, it really means something. And it means something in my family with the uh, type of role models that's in my family, all of them are Noops. Um, it goes way deeper than that. It goes so deep. And it was just a blessing. It's a blessing and a privilege to be one. So I want to know, what do you do in your pastime? You know, some people like to lift weights. What do you like to do? Yeah, so when I'm away from football, when I'm away from everything, I just like to keep, I be to myself, I like to go fishing a lot. Like one thing I like to do, that's one thing I've been real big on, I go fishing a lot with my boy Nick, my boy Nick Glenn, my boy Ken Williams, them my two guys, we go fishing and just kick it. And it's really slow, that's why I love fishing, it's slow, it's patient, and I don't do too much, you know, I just like to keep it slow. Okay, well, well, I tell you, we have the man on this set. He is the man, he will be a draft pick and we're excited. So next coming up, is one of Lewis's crew's niece, Miss Zachlyn Miller. We're excited to have her on the show next. Stay with us. Greetings, Bulldog Nation. In 2025, Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University will celebrate 150 years. As we approach this sesquicentennial milestone, our time has come. As a moment when our campus is growing, enrollment is surging, and research and academic programs are reaching new heights, the world is seeking the kind of diverse, driven, talented leaders who has always defined Alabama A&M. It's our time to celebrate our rich heritage and reimagine a bold future for Alabama A&M. It's our time to step forward and embrace a pivotal role in the future of our city, our state, and our nation. Together, we will light the way forward and spark new possibilities by elevating and energizing a growing destination campus, equipping our researchers, faculty, and professionals of the future with the latest in STEM tools and technology, and empowering scholars ready to lead and serve on a new scale. And it all starts with your support. The next chapter is ours to write. And as we prepare for 2025, you can get involved now. And I ask each of you to answer the call of this institution where service is sovereignty by helping us light the way for the celebration of 150 years of Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. Go Bulldogs. Now, back to On the Hill, live with Dr. Paul A. Bryant. On the Hill, live. <laughs> right now, I'm excited about our next interview because we have the legacy <laughs> of Coach Lewis Cruz. We have Ms. Zachlyn Miller here to really talk about her uncle. And so, Zachary, welcome, welcome. Well, thank you, Dr. Bryant, and thank you as well for allowing me to be here with you all this morning. It's a great honor to sit here with you. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Well, we're excited to have you. And, you know, we talk Let's about, about Lewis Cruz. Cruz. This has been going on since 2010. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what you remember about your uncle. Oh, absolutely. So, I can remember as a child getting in the car with my grandparents from Fort Valley, Georgia, driving to Huntsville. <laughs> and we would spend several days with who I know is Uncle Cruz and Aunt Martha and um, I can remember being in the den 
and wall to wall in the den, all four walls, plaques, pictures, newspaper articles, and A&M paraphernalia, and hearing stories about his time at A&M as a coach. And at the time, as a child, it really didn't resonate, you know? Right. And in the room next to that was a lot of AKA paraphernalia. Oh, that didn't resonate oh, either, but yeah. here I am, yeah. Ski Wee oh. at the Lewis Cruz Classic, oh, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, but I'm just grateful that he got to see the stadium yeah. named in his honor. Yeah. Um, he was very proud of A&M. He was proud of his coaches, he was proud of the, the, the team, the players, you know, and so I'm glad that he got to see the stadium yeah. in his name, yeah. um, but now to see the classic in yeah. his name, on behalf of the entire family, we extend our gratitude because, you know, you, that's just taking it the next mile, you know, yeah. and it's not just the game. Right. As I'm seeing, it's an entire weekend, yes, and as I've gotten the opportunity to get behind the scenes of it, to see all of this happen, a lot of thought has gone into this classic, and we appreciate that because you are really encompassing Lewis Cruz. Yes. Faith with the Sunday service, right. fun with the concert, yes. food and fellowship with the coaches' breakfast, which was great, and now, of course, the football game. Yes. And I think what he would really be proud of and be happy about is the Hill Project. Yes. So yes. because I've learned um, from a lot of people who have spoken to me, he was a coach on and off off the field. And he would be happy that the Hill Project is bringing in children um, 9th through 12th grade to prepare them for the next steps in life, the way that he was trying to do that for those under his purview as well. So I think he'd be deeply moved and honored. So on behalf of Uncle Cruz and Aunt Martha, we say thank you. Yeah, yes, you are more than welcome, more than welcome. You are one of the few in the world who know him as uncle, as a family member, yes. because we all know who Louis Cruz is, and like you said, we are sitting in a stadium named after him. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit more about who he was as a person? Oh, absolutely. So, again, as a child, I, I didn't really, it didn't click with me, you know, his impact. He was a very humble man as well. But also in his latter years, very sentimental, very compassionate, very reflective. And so, again, as I think about this weekend and I'm seeing all that's taking place, I know he would shed some tears of gratitude. He was a compassionate man, very sentimental. Like, he's the tough bulldog for sure. But, you know, there was that, that gentle part of him as well, too. He was also very caring, very loving. And the stories that I'm hearing from others, he was treating them like family. So the Uncle Cruz that I knew is the Coach Cruz that a lot of people know as well, too. Oh, that's amazing. You know, behind they say behind every successful man yes. there's a successful and hard-working woman yes. mm -hmm. so can you talk a little bit about aunt martha oh absolutely <laughs> okay so aunt martha was sharp yeah. mentally and <laughs> the way she dressed, okay? Um, always to the nines. Almost wore a hat yesterday in her honor because she always yeah. was decked out in a hat. But Uncle Cruz, Aunt Martha, um, huge advocates for education. Yes. And, of course, she was a professor at yes. Alabama A&M as well, too. I yes. spoke to one of her former students yesterday. She wow. taught French. Wow. Um, but she was also, like you said, very hardworking, yeah. very supportive, yeah. and also very family-oriented as well, too. Yes. Yeah. What is one aspect of his legacy that you hope is preserved for years to come? Ooh. You know, um, I think it's the stories that I'm hearing even yesterday when Coach Towns was speaking at the, at the uh, coaches' breakfast. It's, it's not just what he did on the field, it's what he did off the field as well, too. And the stories that I'm hearing about how he helped his, his players and, and others as well, too. Even Dr. Jeanette Jones was talking to me about how he pulled her in when she first came to A&M. So I think the, the person behind the coaches you're talking about before, you know, understanding the man that is Lewis Cruz. He was very giving, very generous and compassionate. And I think that's what he would want us to remember as well, too. But also that bulldog fighting spirit, you know, that allowed him to have that winning uh, record to win championships both in football and baseball, yes, you know? Yes. So I think that he would want to just be remembered for all of that. You know, a lot of people don't know and don't remember that he actually was a baseball coach yes, too. He was. he was a head baseball coach here. But yesterday at the breakfast, I heard you tell someone about all the pictures and all the stories yes. that he used to talk about. Yes. We call him, we call this guy the most 
famous yes. oh. football alum. Tell us who that is. That was Mr. John Stallworth. Yes, <laughs> yes. I can remember hearing that name as well as Coach Towns as well, too. But yes, hearing about John Stallworth and, you know, being proud of the, the impact that he had on his players who were able to go on and have successful careers in the professional league of football as well, too. He was very proud of that. And a lot of them, and not just the players, but those like the statisticians and other staff members, yeah. Yeah. they were like family as well, too. So they, he, he pulled everyone in. And I think that's the thing as well, too. He would want that family part remembered. Well, I'll tell you, you heard it today. You heard it from his niece. That was part of his legacy. How compassionate and how sincere he was. He's one of the best. Stay tuned. We have one of our best coming on campus next. Greetings, Bulldog Nation. In 2025, Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University will celebrate 150 years. As we approach this sesquicentennial milestone, our time has come. As a moment when our campus is growing, enrollment is surging, and research and academic programs are reaching new heights, the world is seeking the kind of diverse, driven, talented leaders who has always defined Alabama A&M. It's our time to celebrate our rich heritage and reimagine a bold future for Alabama A&M. It's our time to step forward and embrace a pivotal role in the future of our city, our state, and our nation. Together, we will light the way forward and spark new possibilities by elevating and energizing a growing destination campus, equipping our researchers, faculty, and professionals of the future with the latest in STEM tools and technology, and empowering scholars ready to lead and serve on a new scale. And it all starts with your support. The next chapter is ours to write. And as we prepare for 2025, you can get involved now. And I ask each of you to answer the call of this institution where service is sovereignty by helping us light the way for the celebration of 150 years of Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. Go Bulldogs. Now, back to On the Hill Live with Dr. Paul A. Bryant. Welcome back to On the Hill Live. Now, we have our Vice President of Student Affairs. He has done a phenomenal job at being and bringing students here on this campus. Let's welcome Dr. Brock Talley. Thank you, Dr. Brian. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, it's an honor for me to be sitting here with you. He and I are on cabinet, and we, we sit and we bounce things off of each other. But he has done a great, like I said, a great, great job at bringing students here on campus. Doc, talk a little bit about the record enrollment that we had uh, this fall. So, so let me say that it's not monolithic. It's a truly a team effort. We talked about our cabinet, yeah. and that leadership starts with our president, yes. who sets the bar high on every level across <laughs> uh, across the cabinet. Yes, yes. And, uh, and so I, I applaud him for his visionary leadership yes. and for investing and inspiring us to do well yes. uh, uh, with our enrollment. Right. And so um, we are, last year we had a, the largest class ever in the university's history, yes. and grew the university's largest enrollment, and looks like this year we'll exceed that record as well. Yes, yes. And you know, we, you, you said that it's a collective effort. That's, that's the uh, education part, research, fundraising, a athletics. <laughs> athletics yeah. But what, how long have you been here and what have you, what key things that you've done to make this happen? So um, two and a half years, okay. but we've done the same thing you've done. We built the team. 
Yes. And we try to operate as a team. We set goals and we try to put benchmarks in place to achieve those goals. Yes. So for instance, you, well, we may need to have 400 yards to win the game, <laughs> but it, in first quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, I have to build up to that. Yes. To the safety for an enrollment standpoint. Yes. Look at where we want to go yes. and then put benchmarks in place to achieve those goals to show we're on target. Yes. Yes. You received your PhD, so you've been in school for quite a while. Yes. What is it like, or how important is it rather, for you to build the student experience, being a student yourself, and knowing what students need and want? So, so our students are our customers. And so I think it's important that we recognize them, embrace them, but also meet them where they are. Every student comes with a different set of needs, a different set of challenges. And we've tried to, uh, as best as we can, address as, as many of those as we can. And so I think that's what, uh, you know, there's an old saying that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And that's what Alabama A&M is a family. And uh, we truly have a, a family uh, atmosphere that engages and supports our students. Now, you, you talked about the record enrollment, but there's come some challenges with that, right? Housing. Yes. What have we done to accommodate that challenge? So we know that uh, our, our, our students uh, many of them come from our first generation college students. Many of them come from uh, households that are less than $40,000 a year yeah. uh, are earning, which means they're Pell Grant recipients. Yeah. Many of them are. And so we did not want to say, well, we knew we wanted to grow, but we have to accommodate our students as well. Right. So we increased our housing capacity. Yeah. Now we service about 4,800 students on campus uh, or, or in university managed housing. Yeah. We've leased seven apartment complexes, yeah. many of them the entire apartment complexes, and they are. Uh, relatively nice apartment complexes as well, uh, uh, and, and so the university we're, we're we didn't want to put that that all on the back of the students, yes. so we're paying a, a large portion of that bill as well yes. to ensure, ensure our students are in a safe, uh, but also a, a productive learning environment. Now those students that are live off campus, are they able to? Eat in the dining? Absolutely. Oh, they yeah. have the same access that a student on campus has. We yes, expanded the cafeteria campus. hours as well, so. Uh, We've done everything we can to try to ensure that these students have what they need. Like that, okay? Yes, you have, and I actually am one of those students who <laughs> lives in one of the one of the complexes, and it, it's amazing. So you guys have done such an awesome job. I think that when you are in an environment where you can live well, eat well, be well, then obviously <laughs> that contributes to the learning. In what other ways are you setting up students for success? So let me go back a little bit and just recognize Ms. Carla Miller, uh, our Director of Housing, and Mr. Dwayne Green, who's the Director of Admissions, for their hard work. Yes. But uh, Dr. Jessica Brown runs our Student Activities and Leadership Program. She's created a robust environment for our students, uh, so much that now our students have nice competencies. So if you're an SGA president, when you go on a job interview, you can talk about what that means. This is what I did as a, uh, 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 as SGA president. If you were in the band and a drum major, I, I, I was able to gather 300 students together and work, uh, get them ready for a competition on Saturday. So uh, Jessica Brown, she's done an amazing job. And all throughout our division, Chief Payton, our police chief, he's done a phenomenal job with outfitting our officers with everything they need to keep our student body and our faculty and staff safe. You know, you have one of the uh, most recognized units, and that is the band. Yeah. You know, our Carlton Wright, the March of Maroon and White, they were at Macy's. Tell me the impact of enrollment from that trip. So I think that uh, it was great brand recognition. Yep. It allowed the university to grow and expand and reach new horizons yes. that we've never been. We were the first HBCU to lead the Macy's Day Parade. Yes. So it wasn't just a win for Alabama A&M University, it was a win for all HBCUs. Right. So I think that's something that all of us can celebrate. Yes. And uh, we can't recognize the band without thanking you for your support. <laughs> I'd like to say that, we, uh, that you and I bilaterally support the band because you uh, do a phenomenal job with giving them uh, resources, support, <laughs> Leadership, yes. inspiration, so yes. thank you, A.D. Yes, no. Listen, we're all one, and you know, we talk about us being one big family and everyone touches everyone, uh, and that's just something we do. And you know what, And like you said earlier, it starts with our leadership. You know, we have Dr. Brock Talley, who's one of the best in the business. So I am always excited to have him with me beside me, in front of me. So I say thank you for everything that you do uh, for Alabama A&M. We will be back to wrap up the show. 
you know, we thank you all. We thank all of our guests, but we will be right back. Greetings, Bulldog Nation. In 2025, Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University will celebrate 150 years. As we approach this sesquicentennial milestone, our time has come. As a moment when our campus is growing, enrollment is surging, and research and academic programs are reaching new heights, the world is seeking the kind of diverse, driven, talented leaders who has always defined Alabama A&M. It's our time to celebrate our rich heritage and reimagine a bold future for Alabama A&M. It's our time to step forward and embrace a pivotal role in the future of our city, our state, and our nation. Together, we will light the way forward and spark new possibilities by elevating and energizing a growing destination campus, equipping our researchers, faculty, and professionals of the future with the latest in STEM tools and technology, and empowering scholars ready to lead and serve on a new scale. And it all starts with your support. The next chapter is ours to write. And as we prepare for 2025, you can get involved now. And I ask each of you to answer the call of this institution where service is sovereignty by helping us light the way for the celebration of 150 years of Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. Go Bulldogs. And so I will do this. Information for you, Art Lewis Cruz Classic. Alabama a and versus Kentucky State will kick off at 6 p.m. here at Lewis Cruz. Remember, this is the first home football game of the season. If you still need tickets for the Lewis Cruz Classic, today's game ticket will be purchased at AAMU Event Center and T.E. Elmore Gymnasium. We also made some changes as we have partnered with Clutch for game day parking. The new Clutch app allows Bulldog fans to reserve a parking spot on game days at Lewis Cruz Stadium. Just download the Clutch app and you may find more about the Clutch app on AAMUSports.com. Note, there will be three shuttle locations this season. Union Hill Church on Winchester Road, Union Chapel Church on Winchester Road, and Lakeside United Methodist Church on Meridian Street. Don't forget, our Lewis Cruz Stadium has a clear bag policy. That information may also be found on AAMUSports.com. And make sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. On Instagram, AMU Athletics, Facebook, AMU, AAMU Bulldog Athletics, Twitter at underscore AAMU Athletics, and YouTube, AAMU Athletics. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching this edition of On the Hill Live with Dr. Paul A. Bryant.